Hi, it's me, I'm back again. Um, I just wanted to do a small voiceover so that I could explain the painting process because I tried to do something different. Um, this is the base coat of red and blue on top. The blue is supposed to symbolize veins and then the red is supposed to give that warmth to the um, underlying skin color that I'm now applying. I did the first coat here and then this is the second coat after it was dried. I think I went back in and um, spot added a little bit more color here and there. I was trying to go for a more flush feeling and I decided to treat the face and then the body um, more like a painting as opposed to doing like a regular face up you would do with a doll. Um, but I did end up going back in several times with different um, skin tones, skin colors, trying to make her blush, trying to add highlights here and there just so I can get that more natural feeling. And I also, as I was doing this, I was looking at the model picture because I based this off a real person I found on Pinterest and just going back and seeing if I could get it as realistic as possible. Just be mindful that if you ever tried this technique, oh, and this technique was used with airbrush paint because it's thin enough, um, I think to get like a proper blend and you could still see through the other layers of the paint, especially if you don't let it dry. I think for it, airbrush paint to fully cure, it takes at least 24 hours. At least that was my case when I was doing it. Um, just keep in mind with this application that you will have brush strokes and I think making the paint more watery and then going back in with a sponge can eliminate a lot of those brush strokes or just going in with a sponge in general. Usually when I'm done with the whole painting process, then I'll go back in with some pan pastels just to combine all the elements together. Right now I'm doing her eyes, and this is the first time I'm doing her eyes with enamel paint. Um, I think it gave the best, real, like the most realistic eyes I've ever done, um, just because you can build up transparency with enamel paint. Don't think I showered that day. I can't tell you what I was doing. Probably binge watching some YouTube moment. Who knows? And I remember it being January 13th because my partner thought One, she two, wanted to three, change four, that five. day for me. Okay. Because um, and I wasn't sure why. So I went into the room of where they were. And it was because this crazy time. Hi. I just want to come here and show you guys where I left off on this doll because it's um, 8.50. I'm going to wrap it up for the night. It's very depressing. So here she is in all her glory. I had managed to get her painted and everything, and then I wanted to assemble her head. And the reason why she's in this cellophane gown is because I had to alter the connection between her neck and her head because when I put her neck, finally managed to put her head on her neck, there was too much jiggle, so I had to add clay in her head. Sorry, this clay, some epoxy sculpt in her head and on her neck. I don't know what it's gonna look like tomorrow when it's all dry, but I did, I had so much epoxy clay left over. I wanted to just seal up the top of her head where I was cutting it and yeah sorry she has um she has a really big like a lump like like she has a lump um yeah yeah she has a lump it looks crazy um not a lot of the not a lot of her actual face up has been messed up or anything. At least I'm not seeing that. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it dry for 24 hours and come back to it <sighs> maybe Monday or so. Just let it properly dry so I can test it later. And I was thinking about what hair I was going to do if I was going to do this color. 
or this color. But I can't decide. I think I should, sorry, I'm really bad. <laughs> I can't decide what I want to do. I think I wanted it to be a combination of the two, like an orange, but I'm not seeing the orange one. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. my issue with um today's doll is okay she's the newest one we had a lot of tr we had a lot of problems with our homegirl here she experienced a lot of trials and tribulations that she's trying to overcome one of them being the fact that what happened i didn't think connecting her head to her body all the way through and that was a mistake because i had to take can disconnect her head several times and that caused a lot of breakage and chipping along um a lot of breakage and chipping along her neck as you can see like there's it's it's bad like, all of this is broken and i tried to repair it using some epoxy sculpt but it just didn't work out like how it's supposed to but look at her face it's her face is gorgeous. I like the way her face came out. Of course, we made mistakes. We're going to improve it and stuff like that. But I really do like the way her face came out and her body. I think the coloring is the most naturalist I've ever done. Um, in regards to this of that, um, I'm starting to connect her joints. And I did not think through connecting her feet to the top of her. I just wanted to like get this together and get it done. But unfortunately, I did not think about, oh... I should connect her feet to her body and I didn't think about that and because of that how do I go about doing that that's my problem so the original plan before this was to take out both her arms and then attach wire to them to make them longer to I can then attach to the legs but unfortunately when I was doing that it started to crack her shoulders and I think maybe the cosplay wasn't cured long enough or maybe what the temperatures were too high I'm gonna have to do some sample um, testing with that however I decided instead to connect the feet to wire which I would then connect together at the hips to make one entire piece that she could then be glued into her torso and here I am just taking out the proportions making sure she's going to be tall enough I have a issue of making um, legs proportionate but arms way too long so I want to avoid that this time and with that being said, I also, I like the way the feet came out because they're very movable and they move with the body and it looks more natural, but they, but one dangles a lot more than the other, if you can see. I have done a long time ago, about two weeks ago, which was funny, finish this doll. It's been a long time coming, but we're gonna finish her tonight or until I get tired and go from here. That's why my table is set. She's underneath here in her covers, hopefully undamaged. And please forgive me if you hear a whirling sound, it's my heater. I'm in the basement, which is my art room, and it gets so cold that my feet get numb. Anywho. <laughs> So here's our miss. Look at her little doozies, they move. Okay. And here's our girl. Ah, yes. Isn't she precious? Oh, yes. I love her too. I want to see her with hair. Yes, I do know. I have to fix that. And I don't really have to fix the top of her head because it's just her hair, but I really should fix her neck. Because we're so late in the game with finishing her, I'm debating whether or not I should do it, but that's a whole nother story. So what I'm gonna do right now, you have your polyfill low loft. You get some of that and we're gonna wrap her legs like we did her arms. We're gonna glue everything into place with our handy dandy 
epoxy glue. I was about to say ebony glue. That's not a thing. Um, epoxy glue, everything should be set. And then once that's all done, I think what we're gonna do, cause we're gonna put the glue, sorry, we're gonna go back to the glue part. We're gonna put the glue here and then here and here. I'm just gonna put glue all over and all on this just to make sure she's stable. Once that's done, we're going to um, add the fabric. I think once we add the fabric, then we can do the hair. Hopefully I got the right polyfill. Um, it was a bit of a challenge getting it because the last time I bought some was like years ago. I have my scissors, I'm just gonna cut a small strip, very small, cause this is just gonna wrap around her leg. So that's what I'm cutting. I'm gonna be sitting, I don't know where I got this energy, this burst of energy from, I really don't know, cause I'm exhausted. It's been a long day, I don't know about you, let me know if your day's long as well. It's only um, Tuesday, March 18th. <laughs> 19th sorry i went back in time for a minute there it's only um, marchy march it's only march and it's still cold okay so this is not the same oh yeah I like this because you can pull it and stretch a little bit thin. Now with this doll, I didn't record the entire process of getting her ready and things like that just because, do you guys care to watch that? I think personally, later on, I'm gonna do shorter, shorter videos, like three minute videos showing like how I would put together one doll, except instead of putting it all in one video. I think when I put it all in one video, um, people just get like, what the fudge is this? So, all right, now I'm just wrapping. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that, love. So right now, I'm just wrapping her leg to give her some structure. I've seen so many different ways on building up what I would call body mass. It's not even funny, but this is just my method. And yeah, I'm going to more into depth on that in a later date, but I've seen people use foam, um, that museum tape, is that what it is? That double-sided tape that's kind of thick. Um, I've seen so many ways. String. So, yeah. Oh, shit. I'm glad I didn't finish this. I forgot to... I forgot to put in her wire at the top. Okay. Darn. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I don't really have any tips when it comes to wrapping the body um, with polyfill. I like to use cotton. Well, this is polyfill cotton batten. You get it. I got it from Amazon for like $12 for a roll that could last me, I want to say, three to four dolls. I usually just wrap it up and uh, just start wrapping around the wires until I get the body shape that I'm looking for. But um, now that I'm starting to use it more often, I'm starting to realize I want to change the way they sit, they really don't sit when I use this cotton batting. They curve. <laughs> it's really weird. And uh, I'm gonna show a demo. Oops, sorry. This is the example. And she sits. See, it disturbs the sitting pattern. Am I making too big of a deal of this? Let me know. And I would prefer for them to sit flush against whatever they're sitting on. So what I'm gonna do going forward is instead of 
making the bottom one piece going into the hips, I'm gonna start to use doll joints so that, and doll joints are like what they use for teddy bears and things like that, to make it so that these can sit. I think it would give the doll more functionality, especially when it comes to posing, because some of the poses get really awkward because she can't really sit down. I, I think using the cotton batting, excuse me, I can never remember what this thing is called. I think using the cotton batting is really good for when you're trying to make a doll that just stands all the time. If you never want her to sit down, you don't have to go through the extra work of um, installing doll joints. And I've never done it, but it looks taxing just because you have to sew and cut and match patterns and things like that. And I don't think it's worth it if you're just gonna have her stand the entire time. Um, but these are just thoughts we're having while we're making. Can you see me? You can see a little bit of me. Who knows if we're gonna use this clip set. So, um, it's like nighttime and, oh, now I'm blurry. Hold on. There you go. It's nighttime. It's now 10, 12, we got her together as much as we can go. I'm just letting the epoxy glue do its magic and all that stuff. Um, I just wanted to, thank you. Just wanted to show you where we were at with her progress. And here she is. I'm gonna turn it over to her. One second, one second. Here Miss is, she's leaning on the tower. Okay, there we go. There we go. There she is. She's leaning against my other camera. Um, her feet are very, very movable. So that's why she's here. And I wanted the, the gravity, the natural gravitational force to like force her torso into here. Because I put glue all the way around the um, body part. And at this point, I'm just waiting for everything to harden. And once everything, after five minutes, sorry once everything is fully hardened and everything i'm just gonna leave her overnight to finish setting and then probably come back tomorrow and add her fabric to her body i just usually use this thing to help with like forming the cotton batten or the polyfill the potty fiber whatever that thing is i use this to help shape it but I don't like the feel of this by itself, so I don't want to continue to feel this. So I put a nude fabric on them, sew it on. I would love to have used jersey knit, but I don't have any. I may purchase some, you never know, you never know. Or use like a, like a nude t-shirt on her that's jersey knit. And I'm just going back in with epoxy sculpt so that I can repair some of the damage she had on her neck. And if you didn't know, because I never said anything, the damage came from, I was going to connect her head to her body using a piece of wire. I don't know what possessed me to do that, but it ended up cracking parts of her neck and head, so. The hair that I've been enjoying applying the most has been the mohair. I get the mohair, which is alpaca hair from Etsy from this vendor. And I really love the softness and the texture and how the hair moves when it's applied. I just wish I could get it longer um, so I could uh, vary the lengths when I want to. So 
So for the past couple dolls, I've just been making them and not clothing them. So I just have a bunch of naked dolls everywhere. So I decided this time I'm going to actually make a clothing item. I usually don't just because it takes me so long. I decided to use this book. Um, it's usually used within the Blythe doll community because um, they're they have varying sizes. But I decided just you know to go for it. Decided to make a simple lace gown um, that had an interesting pattern and I got the fabric choices from things I had lying around in my closet and in my sewing box. Um, with this particular dress, uh, you have to cut out a panel and that panel gets sewed on to the skirt um, in a, with a ruffled edge. It was really cute and it came out cute. So I um, made a good choice. Um, and it only took me, I wanna say three hours to sew the dress um, from start to finish. Uh, Cause I, I do believe I did in one day because I'm wearing the same outfit in all these clips. Even though I had more plans to make more accessories for this doll, but I kind of ran out of time, so I couldn't. I think going forward, I'm gonna spend one weekend just sewing a bunch of different clothings uh, to dress various dolls that never got any, so that they're not just in their birthday suits. Um, but yeah, this was a fun project, and I'm glad I got to finish. Yeah. 